Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we just wanted to take this opportunity to thank and welcome back the contingent of officers who went to New Zealand to assist with the peacekeeping operations there. Uh, all of you would know uh, Inspector Shane Williams, who was the officer in charge of the deployment. He led a team of uh, 10 officers, all of whom were ex-New Zealand police officers who volunteered for this mission, and we want to thank them for doing so. When we call for volunteers, we were significantly oversubscribed with officers who wanted to take part in this mission, and that's a credit to all of those who asked to be part of it, and particularly those who were selected and went over for the last 13 days. Um, it broke new ground for us as a department. Never before in the history of the department have we deployed general duties officers outside of Australia to assist another jurisdiction. So uh, Shane and his team uh, are part of history for the department. Given that, it was uh, great to see the officers conduct themselves in such a professional manner and to be so well received by the community of Christchurch. And I'm sure Shane and some of the other team members would be able to talk to that in a little more detail about the sort of things that they saw and the level of acceptance that they got from the community. But on behalf of Commissioner Atkinson, uh, my main job today was to thank you, Shane, and the team uh, for volunteering what was a very, very difficult assignment. I know that what you saw there um, was difficult for you on many levels. For those of you, the ex-New Zealand police officers, to go back to your birth country and to see the devastation of Christchurch, um, I know had a significant effect on everybody. It's very difficult for all of us who are not there, even with the great news coverage that was provided to get a real understanding of the level of devastation. And uh, perhaps you might be able to talk a little bit about that. But uh, I know that uh, it had a humbling impact on you. I know that while the team was there, you experienced a number of significant aftershocks almost on a daily basis, registering over five on Richter scale, again, for our group and for the residents, particularly of Christchurch, obviously a very concerning event whenever that happened. So without any further ado, Shane, can I hand it over to you just to talk about some of your experiences? Uh, yeah, thank you, sir, uh, and thank you for the sentiments. Um, what I'd like to say from the outset is uh, send our prayers and thoughts and best wishes back to the people of Christchurch who we've just left, as well as to those in Japan. Um, for myself and the contingent, uh, it's been nothing short of a privilege to go over and to, uh, to try in some way um, provide some level of reassurance to them that uh, life will go on for them and that in some way there is hope at the end of that tunnel. Um, so to that end and to those people, we wish them all the best. Um, for the contingent, uh, probably something very different uh, to what we're used to. Uh, some of the duties that we did and some of the things we saw were, I guess, not the norm. Uh, having come from the floods and the cyclones recently and seeing the devastation in, uh, in northern Queensland and then in our southern region, to see a city the size of Christchurch largely decimated um, and lying in rubble, its very heart uh, ripped out of it, um, ha it impacts on all of us. Um, it, it's, it's quite eerie to go into their CBD and to, to see coffee cups you know, still with coffee in them, to see pizza uneaten still sitting on the tables, yet not a soul in their CBD. Um, there's only you and the wind and nothing else um, other than the damage and, and the thoughts of what has transpired in this, uh, in this town. Uh, for the people of Christchurch, their lives will never be the same again. Um, they're, they're the very heart of their town, the cathedral, the whole CBD has simply been um, not so much ruined and not, not, uh, and not that it won't be rebuilt, but it's been devastated that it's had a personal and, and obviously profound effect on them. Uh, we, being the Australian contingent, uh, us and the other states that did attend, uh, we were so well received and so well looked after by the people of Christchurch that our thanks will always be with them. Quite humbling to go into a town and be driving down the street, there's no lights, there's no sewage, there's no water, and then someone will stop you on the street just to say thank you and to offer you a coffee and food that they have scarce supply of. And, and that occurred right around the, the, the country and every area we went into. We were received exactly the same. And um, quite poignant for us was uh, we were at a memorial service that was held for everyone. And uh, 
a lady came up to us and sought out the police um, just to give us a hug and to say thank you. And then we found out that that lady's daughter is still missing in amongst the ruins and, and extremely saddened for her. Um, she has no closure at this stage and, and hopefully in short time the, uh, the USAR teams will, will rectify that. The other thing I'd like to comment on is the New Zealand Police and the New Zealand Emergency Services. Phenomenal. They have not stopped. Between 80 and 100 New Zealand Police homes in Christchurch are destroyed and those officers will never return to those homes. Yet they continue to work and have not stopped working since that ill-fated day. Um, and quite remarkably, um, they are volunteering to continue to work. We, we were fortunate to give them a level of respite that meant that they could go to their families uh, and do some work on their homes, but they're there the next day, the next shift, and, and to them, we wish them all the best as well. Um, truly, truly professional, truly unbelievable the efforts they're going to to support their people over there, uh, and that goes to the USAR teams and to the DVI teams, particularly the Queensland DVI teams that went before us. Thank you, Shane. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned family. I see we have some family members with us. It was remiss of me earlier not to personally thank the family members of all of the people who were deployed uh, for making the sacrifice of allowing the contingent members to go. It's a long time to be without uh, your uh, fathers, husbands around you. Uh, we appreciate the sacrifice that the family members made. I'm sure you're glad to have them back, and it's, it's a great reunion homecoming for all of you. And again, can I just reiterate to this group of 11, you are part of a unique part of history for this department and uh, well done. Congratulations for all that you did for the community of Christchurch. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Shane, can you tell us a little bit about the good work the team was doing? Uh, under the banner of reassurance patrols, it was largely what we would term general duties patrol, so just that normal everyday policing. Um, a large portion of it was hearts and minds. It was about making sure that the community was reassured that not only the New Zealand police, but that internationally, and particularly from Australia, we were there to support them. Some of the other work was patrols of the red zone, which is the uh, largely the CBD, which is uh, fenced off and cut off, there's nobody in it, just to, uh, to make sure that uh, there was no unlawful access and no looting from there. The other thing that was important to us was to be able to get out to the schools and to the hospitals um, and interact with the kids who had been affected by it and hear their stories and, and try and share a little bit with them. Um, that, was, that was particularly gratifying. And the other thing was to, on our days off was to go out and help New Zealand police you know, clear up their homes, clear up their debris, move their furniture or whatever we could do um, while they continued to work. Tell us a little bit about some of the aftershocks that may have occurred while you were there and if it was scary. Um, police don't like to say scary. Um, it's, uh, look, we were averaging six aftershocks a day um, and they were between uh, magnitude two and the biggest of 5.1. And uh, it, look, it's, it's really, it's a different feeling for us. Um, for the, the rest of the crew, for me, I'm the only Aussie. Um, so I'd never experienced it. The New Zealanders had. So it's a strange feeling and it's hard to describe to you if you haven't been through it. But for the people of Christchurch, every aftershock is a reminder or every aftershock adds to the stress of, is there another big one coming? Um, so for us, there was, and, and it sounds, uh, it's the wrong word to say it's a novelty, but it, it is, it's a strange sensation to just have a building sway that you're in, the building starts to sway and twist, everything starts to shake bitumen and concrete flow as if it's a wave uh, and then it all settles and everyone takes a deep breath and moves on. It's, it's quite a strange sensation. How did it feel to be able to offer that help to the police officers over there? Oh, it's, it's, it's hard to describe. It, it's, just, it's been nothing short of a true privilege um, to be part of this contingent and to work with these gentlemen to deliver that response is nothing short of a privilege and We've, we've probably left thinking we would have liked to have done more, um, but as far as what our goal was, I think we achieved that, and I think uh, together with the other Australian law enforcement agencies, you know, we, we did provide a level of reassurance, particularly to the people of Christchurch and that Canterbury area. I think obviously from a departmental point of view, this was the, the mirror reverse of what happened during Safeguard when we got 200 interstate police to come up and help our community with general duties and anti-looting patrols. We were able to, to make a small repayment 
on that gesture by sending uh, our team back to Christchurch to do very much the same sort of work. So we know from our experience how much we valued having those interstate officers come in to support us. And uh, so we know from our own experience uh, how much you would have been valued, accepted and welcomed by the Christchurch community. Sorry, we're just bringing the contingent forward so that uh, you can see the members that, uh, that went over and delivered the services. <coughs> Come up, fellas. <laughs> just introduce yourself, mate. Uh, Sergeant Dave Gillies. Group one, Dave. Uh, Trina Bosch, the golf lesson. Uh, Senior Constable Mark Fowley, um, Station Director at St Howard. Sergeant Carl Cutler from the Forensic Crash Unit. Uh, Senior Constable Steve Gillies from Henson Station. Senior Constable Deacon Guam, based at Downing Station. Senior Constable Brendan Winslow of Dunwich Station, formerly of the Gold Coast. <laughs> uh, Senior Constable Peter Ricker from Kawhi Ward, Central Coast. Uh, Senior Constable Simon Donaghy, uh, Port of St Kelly. There's, uh, there's two members who can't be here uh, for personal reasons, and we'd like to acknowledge uh, Senior Constable Ducey and, um, and uh, the other one. Warren Thorpe. Sorry, and, and, sorry, and Senior Constable Warren Thorpe. They've had some um, family issues to attend to, uh, one in New Zealand and the other here, and obviously we wish them well at Dave and Debbie's as well. Just, uh, just very briefly, boys, as, uh, as the inspector mentioned, on, on our days off we, uh, we helped a number of people, including uh, police officers, but uh, yesterday a number of us went to uh, one particular school, uh, a lady of Victory School, it's a Catholic school there. Uh, and we, I tell you what, I've never felt more like a beetle in my life. <laughs> we turned up, we were swamped. It, it, was, it was crazy, you turned up, this is just a, a small amount of what they gave us. They were just so overwhelmed for the police to go there. It was, it was overwhelming for us to be, to be appreciated like we were. It was just so significant, I just, I just can't describe how much, how appreciated we, we were. We went there, we gave a little talk, uh, took some photos and then I believe they sent that on the, uh, they've got a Facebook website and they've uh, put us in the newsletters and it's, it's the Beatles. <laughs> 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 it's amazing. Beatles and Beatles. <laughs>